First, I'd like to thank Jeju National University for giving me the opportunity to talk to students about international mindedness. My name is Keith E. My Korean name is E. Gi Dong, and I'm currently the head of parent relations at North London Collegiate School in Jeju. Uh, previous to that, I was the principal, high school principal at Walter Panis High School in New York. And also, I'm the founding head of the junior school here at NLCS Jeju. First, I'd like to uh, talk about a book that some of you may have read, uh, The World is Flat. It was published in 2005, and if you would like to uh, um, uh, read a summary of the book, you can go on to this link and uh, click on it so that you can read about the, uh, the contents of the book. Uh, but the book talks about globalization in the 21st century. And if I were to use two words to describe globalization, it would be interconnectedness and interdependence. Basically, it is the process in which people, ideas, and goods spread throughout the world, spurring more interaction and integration between the world's cultures, governments, and economies. Now, some, of, some people may say that globalization is bad, or some people might say that it's, it's good. And I'm not here, obviously, to argue both sides, but it's up to the individuals to decide whether or not globalization is a good thing or a bad thing. So what is international mindedness? Uh, there are many th definitions uh, that goes with it. But before we get started, I would like to do a little activity with the students. So uh, you may pause this video and think about uh, this activity. So basically, I would like uh, students to rank these people that I'm going to put on the slide uh, from one to five with the most internationally minded person as number one and the least internationally minded person as number five. And I'm sure some of these people you are very familiar with. And please take a look at the quotes that I included with the individuals. So take about two or three minutes to think about uh, who you might think would be the most internationally minded person and the least uh, internationally minded person. So first, I'd like to start with the definition for international mindedness. And right now, there are no commonly uh, agreed upon definitions uh, for international mindedness. Uh, it may be defined from the perspective of securing peace, eradicating poverty, or understanding different cultures. But there is an organization called International Baccalaureate Organization that was established back in 1968 in Switzerland. And they had a vision for a better world. Uh, the IB was founded in paving the way for groundbreaking developments in international education. And currently, it is offered in over 4,700 4, schools uh, around the world in 170 different countries. And if you would like to take a look at the evolution uh, of education for international mindedness, there is a, a paper that I'd like to share with the students. So if you want to take a look at that and read the history behind uh, interna international mindedness education, you may do so. So International Baccalaureate Program is a very, high, pre, uh, a very uh, prestigious uh, program uh, throughout the world. And um, it, the aim of the International Baccalaureate Program is to develop internationally minded people who recognizing their common humanity and shared guard guardianship of the planet to help to create a better and more peaceful world. So that is basically the philosophy behind IB Diploma Program. These programs in encourage students across the world to become active, compassionate and lifelong learners who understand that other people with their differences can also be right. So now I'd like to share with uh, the students the seven uh, signs or seven characteristics of internationally minded person. Now again, there is no one definition of what is an internationally minded person. So this comes from Ms. Carolyn Savage, who is a, a, an experienced IB teacher. So when you take a look at this uh, cartoon here, um, think about what it, the, the meaning behind it. So you have three individuals from different cultures uh, and talking about towers. So this person sa is saying, excuse me, which tower are you actually talking about? So you have 
uh, three individuals and uh, one person, it looks like from uh, China. So he's thinking about a particular tower that he has in his mind. And then you have an American who's thinking about what it means to talk about a tower. And then it, this individual here looks like is a, a French uh, person. And obviously in France, the, the most famous tower is the Eiffel Tower. So this is a perfect example of what it means to be an internationally minded person, having respect for other cultures and differences and different perspectives. So the first uh, uh, sign that I would like to talk about is the intercultural understanding. So having the knowledge, understanding, and appreciation of different cultures. Some of you may have seen this chart before. Uh, it's called the cultural iceberg. And basically, it, 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 it demonstrates um, the concept be behind cultures. And when, you, when we talk about cultures, uh, there are certain things that, that are visible, and then there are certain things that are non-visible. So things that are visible are things like the language, um, the clothing that you may wear, uh, the type of behavior, uh, foods that you may eat, uh, and, and so on. So these are all things that are visible, uh, but uh, then there are things that are less visible. So things like traditions, um, preferences for music, uh, talents, um, skills, knowledge, life experiences, all these things are not visible. So when you talk about cultures, pretty much majority, I would say 90% of cultures is invisible to the eyes. So that's something that we have to be mindful of when we talk about uh, a, you know, internationally minded person. The second concept uh, that I'd like to share with you is increased self-awareness or introspection. So basically it means having a clear understanding of your personality, strengths, weaknesses, beliefs, motivations, and emotions. So I included this uh, 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 photo or the image on here, uh, and it says the fish will be the last to discover the water. And you may have seen that before, uh, but basically, it means that uh, when you are immersed in your own culture, sometimes you may not notice what's outside. Okay? So this image is a very important image, obviously, because when you look into the mirror, who do you see? Uh, what you see is only that's, the, that's on the surface. Uh, but within, uh, you have all that culture within yourself. Uh, so introspection basically means that you are thinking about and having the awareness of who you are as an individual. The third idea is uh, called empathy, uh, having increased empathy, uh, the ability to understand and feel what someone else is feeling. This is a concept that I think is very, very important uh, if you are uh, being considered as an internationally minded person. Uh, there is a difference between, there's a similar word uh, in our language called sympathy. Now, the, sim the word sympathy and empathy are quite different. And some people uh, have uh, misunderstanding uh, of the two concepts. So sympathy is basically when, when something bad happens to another individual, your friend, your family member, and so on, you just feel very sorry for them, okay? But empathy is very, very different. It's not just feeling sorry for the other individual, but also feeling you are in their shoes and feeling the same pain as that individual and willing to help that individual overcome uh, that sadness or, uh, and so on. So that is a very important concept that in, in, in our current school here, and also as an educator for the past 32 years, I've been trying to teach students uh, having that uh, 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 empathy for others. This is a very famous quote that, that, that I truly enjoy, uh, obviously from uh, Albert Einstein. He said that empathy is patiently and sincerely seeing the world through the other person's eyes. It is not learned in school. It is cultivated over a lifetime. 
So empathy is not something that we just learn from textbooks or in a school, but at home uh, from your parents, uh, from the society and from the people that you associate with and, and so on. So it's a very important concept. So the next concept that I'd like to uh, talk about is the ability to collaborate with peers from different uh, backgrounds. This idea came about uh, a number of years ago, and it's called the 21st Century Learning Skills. And there was an organization in, in the States, in the United States, that, that uh, talked about what do we need our students to have in terms of their skills and knowledge in the 21st century in order to be successful. And they came up with a number of uh, skills, and I'd like to just share with you some of them here. So it's called the four C's, and basically the, the, the four concepts all start with the letter C, and that's the reason why they're calling it four C. And if you would like to read more about this, obviously you can link this uh, uh, URL here and then and read more about it. But basically it says um, collaboration, uh, creativity, communication, and critical thinking. So these are four ideas, four skills that we want our students to have in the 21st century. And for the international mindedness concept, the most important one here is about collaboration. And basically it's, it's, it's about working together, uh, solving disagreements because obviously there are many, many uh, opportunities where students have to find way to uh, resolve conflicts between themselves and so on. So solving disagreements is a very important concept. Uh, using people's strengths, uh, they, they say that um, when, when uh, companies look for an individual when, they, when they're hiring uh, for employment, that they're looking for people who have people skills. So being able to relate and being able to connect with your peers and, and so on. So that's a very important concept here. Uh, all ideas and people are heard, uh, very important when you're collaborating and when you're working within a group because you can't just ignore an individual who may have a good idea or even a bad idea. So, so it doesn't matter if the person has good or bad ideas, but that, that individual's ideas must be heard. Um, and then obviously being respectful of the others. And, and then finally, uh, goal setting. So these are all very, very important uh, ideas behind uh, collaboration. Uh, and if I may just uh, talk a little bit about the other uh, Cs, uh, just briefly, because they're very, very important as well. Creativity, uh, we're living in an age, a technology age and, and digital age, so creativity is a very important uh, skill that students need uh, for the 21st century. Uh, communication, obviously, is a very important thing. So being able to speak in front of others and just like what I'm trying to do here uh, with the students on online lecture, being able to communicate and uh, being able to communicate your uh, thoughts and, and ideas uh, clearly uh, to the other people so that they can understand. Um, and then critical thinking. Uh, these, this is a very important skill, obviously, in any school environment. Being able to uh, ask questions, being able to problem solve, and, and, and so on. So, so these are all very, very important skills uh, that our students need. But in terms of the international mindedness, I would say collaboration is probably the most important out of the four C's here. So the next slide that I would like to share with you is, is about the knowledge and understanding of global issues. And uh, take a minute or so uh, before I, I move on uh, to pause this video a little bit and think about the type of global issues that we currently have. And I'm sure you can come up with a number of them. So what are global issues that we must address in the 21st century? So these are just some examples that, that, that I came up with. Um, the one big one is currently the climate change. Uh, this is a, a very important uh, global issue that uh, the entire world, especially here in Korea, uh, as we struggle with fine dust particles, uh, warnings, and so on recently. So this is a very important uh, uh, point that, that we need to think about. Poverty and hunger. 
Um, we don't currently have that here uh, in, in, in Korea, but uh, the, the many parts of the world, uh, like in Africa or even state, uh, United States, we have a lot of poverty and hunger there as well. So you may think that you know United States is a rich country and a wealthy country, but believe it or not, there are plenty of people in the United States that are struggling uh, in terms of when it comes to uh, uh, hunger and, and poverty. Another one is migration. This has become a very important um, uh, problem, uh, issue, um, uh, throughout the world, and including Korea. And especially in Jeju, recently, if you, remember, if you know about uh, Yemeni uh, uh, refugees that, are that have come into Jeju, uh, that's a very important issue that we're struggling with. As a, as a society, as a country. So migration uh, is a very important thing. And um, right now in Europe, uh, migration is a huge issue there as well. Uh, same thing in the United States. I'm sure you, you heard about uh, United States uh, 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 President Donald Trump trying to build a wall so that uh, migrant workers from Mexico and, and South America and Central America uh, cannot come into the United States. So, so migration is a global issue that's impacting many, many people around the world. Plastics uh, in the seas, pollution, uh, that's a very important global issue that all of us are struggling with as well. Human rights. Uh, there have been a lot of conversation about human rights in North Korea. Uh, so that's another example of um, um, global issue that's impacting us. And obviously, energy resources. Uh, this is a very important um, uh, issue that I think the 21st century, we need to come up with a, a solution uh, uh, so that uh, our younger uh, students and younger children will, will be free of worrying about energy um, resources in the future. And then finally, talking about United Nations peace and security. And that's always an, a, a, a very important global issue. And once again, coming back to Korea here, um, there's, there's been a lot of uh, a progress being made with North Korea and South Korea and, and uh, also United States being involved in the conversation with North Korean leader and so on. So peace and security is another global issue. And not only here in Korea, but throughout the world. The sixth um, concept that I'd like to share with you in terms of international mindedness is the ability to see themselves, yourself, as responsible global citizens. So what do we mean by a global citizen? And again, if you would like to uh, um, look at a video uh, and learn more about what means to be a global citizen, I strongly encourage you to click that. Uh, global citizen URL and, and link and uh, uh, take a, uh, a look at the, uh, the video and um, I think you will uh, learn a little bit more about what it means. But basically it means that global citizen is someone who is aware of and understands the wider world uh, and, and their place in it. Uh, they take an active role in their community and work with others to make our planet more equal, fair, and sustainable. So I really like this image here uh, because it, it talks about uh, thinking globally but acting locally. So the fact that we are in Jeju, uh, it's an island obviously, but, uh, and, the, and the, we have the world outside, but uh, the, you know, we talked about these global issues in the uh, previous slide. Now how do you go about resolving or, or contributing to solving those issues? It does not necessarily mean that you have to go somewhere else. Uh, but working, actively working here locally, we can uh, make, make a contribution to solving uh, these issues. Um, so it talks about global engagement. So that word engagement means that you are being actively uh, working towards uh, resolving and solving these global issues. And I'm sure that we as individuals uh, can find ways so that we can contribute uh, to, to solving these issues um, uh, that's impacting the entire world. The final skill uh, that, that, we will, that I like to talk about is language skills. And uh, it's called multilingualism. 
And basically what it means is that if you are able to speak more than one language, so if you're able to speak two languages or three languages or four languages and so on, it means that you are multilingual. And in order to be an internationally minded person, if you are multilingual, it's going to help you uh, be, be uh, internationally minded. Now, it does not mean that uh, that you have to speak two languages or three languages and so on to be internationally minded person. It does not mean that, but it's going to definitely help you if you were to learn the second language or third language that it's going to help you uh, uh, learn more about the other different cultures, uh, understand about cult other cultures and traditions and so on. So role of teaching and learning of languages is developing international mindedness. Basically, you will have a deeper understanding and appreciation of different cultures. Uh, you will have increased cognitive processing. There's been a lot of research out there that says that when you learn second language or third language, your thinking skills develop uh, tremendously. So that is one of the reasons why in our school here at NLCS Jeju, uh, we teach our students second languages or sometimes third languages. So we offer things like French, uh, 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 Spanish, and uh, Latin uh, here. Uh, and then also finally, uh, self-identity. Uh, that's a very important uh, uh, concept, obviously. If you go back to uh, previous slides, we talked about the self-awareness or introspection. Um, so when you learn a second language or third, third language, it will help you with your uh, self-identity. And, and finally, uh, language and culture, I strongly believe that they go hand in hand. And I've been a very lucky and very, being very fortunate to have gone to the United States, even though I'm Korean. Uh, I went to America a long, long time ago, and uh, 45 years ago, and I learned the second language. And because of that, I've been able to appreciate not only the Korean culture, but also the American culture as well, and the Western cultures. So having language uh, it, it definitely uh, benefited me personally uh, in terms of being, uh, becoming more internationally minded uh, person.